Hey everybody, it's Aaron from WPKB and in this video we're going to take you through sort of a getting started guide to easy social share buttons. Uh, so what you can see on my screen now is the WordPress dashboard. I've clicked on easy social share buttons in the left hand menu. Uh, and we're in the main settings tab. Below that you'll have uh, another menu where you've got configuration wizard, quick, quick apply, quick fix and so on. Uh, that menu will be persistent regardless of the tab that you're actually viewing. Uh, we've got some more settings below this and it comes down to main settings and you can see that there's there's quite a lot to cover there so what we're going to do we're going to just run through the configuration wizard now uh, and what you first get is the template that you'd like to use there's the default of course we've got metro around uh, metro retina uh, and so on i'm just going to change the size there so you can see a little bit more now of course choose whatever you'd like or whatever fits the look of your website the most I'm going to go with Metro Retina for this. Uh, generally speaking, it's best to choose a Retina template because that's going to cover people on Retina MacBook Pros, people on high resolution smartphones and so on. So I have chosen that and we're just going to click next. Now we have to choose the default button style. You can see the social share button type is currently set to buttons with network name and network icon. You can change it so it's just the name and no icon, icon only and not name. Uh, and also you can change it to the icon network name visible on button hover. I'm just going to leave it on the default for this video. Uh, you can also choose to activate some animations. This is a new feature uh, in the plugin. It works best with the retina of course uh, as noted there on the left. Choose smooth colors pop up, zoom out or flip. We're just going to go with smooth colors to try and show that. Uh, and finally you can display the count of sharing. Uh, it's, it's a no or yes option. We're going to leave it on no because this is only a test website. Uh, there would be nothing to display there. Next we need to choose what actual buttons we want to show. You can see here that Facebook, Twitter and email are chosen by default. You might want to put Google Plus and Pinterest there uh, or you can you know choose Tumblr as well. It's really up to you what you'd like to choose there, but you know, there's a great range of options. Those are just the ones that we're going to run through for this and then we'll click on next. Now we just need to choose how you want the buttons to align. They can be to the left, to the right or centered. Let's just go with centered for now. Uh, and when in the Twitter button is hit, you can choose a Twitter username. We're just going to put in WPKB.com. Uh, then you might want to put in a hashtag as well that'll populate by default. We'll just put in WPKB for this uh, video. Next, we get to choose if we want to use the short URL service. Uh, now, it is better to use that than to use the full URL. It will make your tweets look a little bit cleaner. We're going to turn that on. Uh, you can see here, you've got the option of WP get short link, goo.gl and bit.ly. For this, we're just going to use WP get short link uh, because bit.ly requires an API key and so on to get started. Uh, so with that set up, we're going to hit next. Finally, we just need to choose where these buttons are going to actually be displayed. You can choose from posts, pages, media, lists of articles, you know, such as your archives and WooCommerce products, uh, which is obviously going to be pretty handy if you're running a WooCommerce store. For this, we're going to put it on posts and pages and just leave it at that. Other than that, you can choose to display in post excerpt. That's really up to you if you want. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, you can put it at the top or the bottom of the excerpt should you choose to activate it, but it's going to make your home page look pretty messy and it will draw pretty much all the attention to the buttons rather than say the content or anything else happening there. So I'm going to leave that one off. Uh, we'll just hit next. Uh, then we just need to choose the position of the buttons. Here you can go from you know top, bottom, both the top and the bottom with short codes only because this plugin actually comes with a great deal of short codes. You can use sidebars. You want the buttons to be statically floating from the top pop-ups. Uh, you can see there's really no, really no shortage. What we're going to do though, is just put it on both the bottom of the content and the top, uh, because that'll make it easier uh, to demonstrate in this video. Thereafter, you can choose some additional display positions. So you can also have the post vertical float sidebar. We'll just turn that on as well. Flying panel, pop-up window, uh, window sidebar. Uh, and then we've got to choose some mobile device options. So you can choose to change the display method for uh, mobile devices. So if someone's visiting on their phone or their tablet, you might only want to put the buttons on the, the bottom. Uh, now, as for the sidebar position, you can choose the bottom or the top as well. And if someone's visiting the website on a low resolution screen, uh, mobile or low resolution mobile device, you can turn the buttons off. Uh, you can also choose to hide the buttons for all mobile devices. It's up to you though, of course. Uh, we're not going to be showing you how it looks on a mobile phone. Uh, so with those settings done, we're just going to hit next. 
Finally, we come down to setting up social share optimization. Uh, we're talking about open graph tags that Facebook would insert and so on. Uh, now, if you're using a plugin such as WordPress SEO by Yoast or perhaps really almost any other WordPress plugin, that's probably already going to be taken care of for you. In the instance that you're not though, you can use this plugin to take care of it for you. So we're just gonna turn that on because we're using no other plugins that are going to be inserting that into the page. And then we get down to some optimization options uh, to make the page load a little bit faster. We can use minified plugin resources, which is great. Uh, that'll lower the file size. We can load JavaScript asynchronously. And you can also choose to load JavaScript uh, files in a deferred fashion. We're not going to turn that one on uh, for the moment uh, because this is only a test site. And finally, what we can do is remove the version number from script and CSS files. Uh, as you can see here, it'll remove the question mark ver equals, uh, which can allow the files to be cached that may otherwise not be able to be cached. Uh, we're not gonna turn that on. Normally I would, but for this, if we're making changes, we wanna be able to see them as quickly as possible. We don't wanna have to wait for a cache uh, to be cleared or have to do that ourselves. Below this, we get into some built-in caching options. We can activate the cache, choose the cache mode. You want it for dynamic resources or just button render and dynamic resources. And you can also choose to combine uh, all of the CSS files into one. We're not going to turn any of these on. They are still in beta anyway, uh, so you're going to use them at your own risk. They certainly could help improve the load speed of your website uh, and you know reduce the overall amount of data that needs to be downloaded by the visitor. Uh, so with these settings you know all configured, we're going to hit finish, and that should be done. So what we want to do now is just go and visit our website. And we won't see anything here because we haven't configured that to be like that. But there you go. If you go actually onto a post or to a page, you can see we've got the share buttons there at the top, the floating sidebar there, uh, with some nice effects. Uh, and we'll see them again at the bottom there. Uh, so that's where we're going to wind this video up. Just to recap, we've gone through the configuration wizard to help you get up and running with easy social share buttons uh, without too much of a headache. If you have any questions about anything we've covered in this video, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more.